In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, 
grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if a swelling or scab or shiny spot appears on a man's skin, a case of leprosy of the skin is to be suspected. The man must be taken to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests who are his sons. The man is leprous, he is unclean. The priest must declare him unclean. He is suffering from leprosy of the head. A man infected with leprosy must wear his clothing torn and his hair disordered. He must shield his upper lip and cry, unclean, unclean. As long as the disease lasts, he must be unclean, and therefore he must live apart. He must live outside the camp. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Whatever you eat, whatever you drink, whatever you do at all, do it for the glory of God. Never do anything offensive to anyone, to Jews or Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I try to be helpful to everyone at all times, not anxious for my own advantage, but for the advantage of everybody else so that they may be saved. Take me for your model as I take Christ. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and pleaded on his knees. If you want to, he said, you can cure me. Feeling sorry for him, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. Of course I want to, he said, be cured. And the leprosy left him at once, and he was cured. Jesus immediately sent him away and sternly ordered him, Mind you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and make the offering for your healing prescribed by Moses as evidence of your recovery. The man went away, but then started talking about it freely and telling the story everywhere so that Jesus could no longer go openly into any town, but had to stay outside in places where nobody lived. Even so, people from all around would come to him. The Gospel of the Lord. The comment on today's scriptures could be titled The Divine Drama of the Tragedy of Sin or indeed The Divine Drama of Two Lepers. But first let us note that God does not deal in fictions and he does not change. He faces us today with the real life drama of two lepers. Lepers from the period of the book of Leviticus in the year 1445 BC. And the other leper is about 30 AD as reported in the gospel today. In a drama spanning about 1,500 years, God continues to abhor the Leviticus leper and impose on him banishment from his community. But in the time of Jesus, about 1,500 years from Leviticus, God instantly heals the leper in today's gospel with a compassionate touch of his hand. What is the explanation for this divine drama? One leper is shunned and excluded. The other leper is embraced. But first, let us look at life for a leper from Leviticus period. The Jewish law derived from the book of Leviticus kept lepers away from the worshiping community because the leprosy made them ritually unclean, unable to participate in the liturgical life of Israel. In the law of Moses, ritual defilement always called for ritual purification. Ritual impurity, like a contagious disease, could be spread by contact from one person to another. Thus, lepers were required to live apart, to live apart from the liturgical communion of the Jews 
and they were never to have physical contact with anyone who was ritually clean. Leprosy is the oldest horrible disease of the body known to humanity. It disfigures its victims and is a danger to the community of the victim. Mortal sin is the oldest deadly and horrible disease of the soul known to humanity. Remember the flood. Mortal sin hurts the sinner. It hurts the community of the sinner and separates the sinner from God and from the communion of saints. Just as the leper has to separate himself from his community. At the appointed time, out of his abundant love for humanity, God sent his only begotten son to save us from our sins and heal us from all diseases, including leprosy. Look at the leper's request in the gospel today. If you wish, you can make me clean. See the impact the leper made on Jesus. He was moved with pity. God has always been moved with pity from the beginning, even during the Leviticus time. Here is where we begin to understand the deepest meaning of this encounter. The unclean leper stands for sinful man, that's us, whose disobedience, the sin, prevents from communion with the Holy God. The law given to Moses identifies and contained the sickness, but was not able to heal it. But when Jesus came, he can. The sinner has no right to this healing. He is utterly dependent upon the mercy and the grace of God. On his knees, in a posture of adoration, the sinner too says, if you wish, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hand, touched the leper, and said to him, I, I do will it, be clean. Not only had the leper acted courageously in approaching Jesus against the rule, but our Lord did the un unthinkable by stretching out his hand to touch the leper. Here was something new in Israel. The law requires holiness to be preserved by not coming in contact with impurity because impurity was contagious. Now, however, the holiness of Jesus reaches out itself and becomes infectious. Holiness of Jesus becomes infectious. It conquers and heals the impurity. Jesus sends the leper to the priest to be readmitted to the worshiping liturgical community just as we go to our priests when our sin separates us from God and from our community. Jesus has the power to restore our right relationship with God and to restore our relationship with each other, with our community. Just as leprosy hurts the sinner and separates him from his community, our mortal sins hurts us, offends God, 
and separates us from our community. And it is this separation from the community that we don't really often think about. One of the most underappreciated teachings of the church is her understanding of the communion of saints. Just as the church is called to be holy or set apart from the world, so too the saints are holy ones, those in a state of grace, those set apart from the world, Baptism it inserts us into the communion of the church and thereby places the call upon us to be saints. And the handbook of the Legion of Mary says that God wants us to be saints a million times more than we do. This communion applies to those here on earth. It extends to those in the church suffering in purgatory, as well as those in the church triumphant in heaven. The communion of saints is made of all Christians who are members of the one body of Christ. This implies that the church here on earth is called to be in communion with one another. This communion is guaranteed and strengthened by our reception of Holy Communion, where Jesus himself gives us his body to be more fully his body, the church. Thus, when we sin seriously, when we commit mortal sin, when we do not hold on to what Christ has given us in faith, we refrain from receiving communion because through our actions and belief, we are no longer in communion with Christ and his church. To all the illness of the body, before Jesus went back to heaven, he said to his apostles, these are the signs that will be associated with believers. In my name, they will cast out devils. They will lay their hands on the sick who would recover. In the year 325 AD, it was the beginning of the construction of Christian hospitals in the Roman Empire in fulfillment of the mandate of Christ. Christian missionaries built hospitals in many parts of the world and also trained doctors and nurses, contributing to the eradication of many diseases such as leprosy from many parts of the world. Now, the divine drama is complete. And what is the lesson? That we must dread and avoid mortal sins as a spiritual leprosy. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, 
Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, called to follow the Lord Jesus in faith as his disciples, let us with confident trust place before our Heavenly Father the intercessions of the Holy Spirit, that these intercessions the Holy Spirit inspires us to ask. For the church, may she ever proclaim the gospel message that Christ died for our sins was buried and rose again on the third day, and so bring all people to walk in the path of salvation and love. Lord, in your mercy, for peace in the world, may those born to new life in baptism as disciples of the Lord Jesus be strengthened to be messengers of peace in their lives and promote a just peace in all corners of the world. Lord, in your mercy, for those who suffer from famine, illness, and poverty, may they be sustained by the untiring love and support of men and women who are filled with firm hope and faith. We pray in particular for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, for the unemployed and their families, that they may be treated with respect find appropriate work and support in their daily needs. Lord, in your mercy, for those who have died recently and for those whose anniversaries occur at this time, that free from all their sins, they may become sharers in eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy, let us ask Our Lady, Mother of Unfailing Help, to join her prayers with ours. Hail Mary, full of grace. Blessed are thou amongst men, and blessed be the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your people may respond with ever greater faith to the call of your Son to love of neighbour, and so be strengthened to proclaim your love and mercy through Christ our Lord. Sweet. 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for us, though, and may it become for those who do Your will, the source of, re, of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for through this Paschal mystery he accomplished the marvellous deed, by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness, into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Marcus, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or the offer it from themselves, and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying the homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude. Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Cassogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, 
and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to your God, his Almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask your almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace.
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who are sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Just a few announcements to draw your attention to today. Remembering that Stations of the Cross will be during the Lenten season, Tuesdays and Fridays at 12 noon. And, of course, this coming Wednesday, Wednesday the 17th, is Ash Wednesday. We'll be having uh, Mass and the distribution of ashes at 8 a.m., 12.30 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. here at the Cathedral, and 10 a.m. at the Holy Rosary. And we remember that it is a day of um, fasting and abstinence. Um, Lenten alms boxes were supposed to be at the back um, for anyone who was interested, but I think we've run out. Uh, a few may have appeared at the back during this Mass, but uh, not to worry, there will be more next week. We also have uh, Walk With Me booklets available, um, calendars and other um, Lenten kind of... Uh, uh, gone on the word now, this is embarrassing, and it's being broadcast online, but other uh, pamphlets and booklets uh, for children for this Lenten season at the back as well. Again, just to finish by saying that here at the Cathedral we wish you uh, a very blessed and holy week ahead of you and the assurance of our love and prayers here from the Cathedral. May God bless you. The Lord be with you. By your hands we bless you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Amen.